Wait for God and don't rush. Wait for God and don't allow the enemy to come in and cause you to rush when God is clearly, clearly telling you to wait. Don't rely on your own strength rather than trusting in God. Don't compromise and tolerate people and their nonsense rather than turning to God for your protection and the help that you need. So tolerating people because you feel they might be able to give you something or you gain something or help you in some way rather than turning to God for his protection and for him to help you. You know, you have to wait on God. You have to trust in God and wait when God clearly says, wait. Anything other than that is rebellion against God. If God is telling you to wait and you're not waiting, that is rebellion against God. You have to wait for his guidance. His guidance about what you're going to do with your relationships, what you're going to do with the next step in life, what you're going to do with your money, what you're going to do with your career, what you're going to do if you're going to relocate, if you're not going to relocate somewhere, what you're going to speak. You know, it, it's, it constantly has to be the Holy Spirit in you, leading you, speaking through you, doing the deeds through you, guiding you. You have to get yourself out of the middle and let God, give God the steering wheel of your life, you know. Don't rush into money deals and betray God for money. Don't rush into careers that are not God ordained and and betray God for a career. Don't rush into intimate relationships and betray God for a man or a woman. You're betraying God. That's rebellion as well. You have to wait on God. You have to believe in his word. Believe that his promises will come to pass. What promises? The promises of the Holy Bible. There are over 7,000 promises God makes all of his children. I will be with you. I will provide for you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will never leave you. I will love you. I will, I will, I will. All right? We have to wait on God. Let's stop seeing a trial or a tribulation around us and immediately we allow the water to sink to come into the sh ship and make us sink we have to trust in god in the middle of the storm like peter when he was walking on water as long as he had his eyes focused on jesus he was performing the impossible the storms the hectic winds were around him but they didn't get into him to cause him to fit to sink the second he took his eyes off of Jesus and started focusing on the storms and the winds which represent the problems in your life, whatever you are going through, that's when fear got into him and he started to sink. But you have to know that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we have to believe in God in the middle of the storm that he will make you blessed. You know, blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is he who waits on the Lord. If you do anything other than that, you're disobeying God. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you that disobedience will bring you pain. Disobedience will bring pain and suffering in your life. Disobedience will open so many spiritual doors for the evil one to come in. And the Bible says, do not give the devil a foothold. You know, man is foolish for turning to the world rather than God. Man is foolish. This is foolishness. Man is foolish for turning to the world for protection, for love, for help, for provision, for money, for validation, for attention, for affection. This is pure, pure, pure foolishness. This is foolishness at its finest. Turning to the world for these things rather than God. You know, some people need love and they turn to the world for love. And because they turn to the world for love, they find lust and not love. And then they say, all women are users, all men are scum. No, you're just looking in the wrong places. Because I can promise you a godly man or a godly woman are not scum. Oh, there's always lack, there's always this. Things are always breaking down. Things are always going wrong. Because you're trying to draw from the wrong well or the wrong source. It's a well that runs dry. But Jesus said, He who drinks of this water which I shall give them shall never thirst again. You might be thirsty for attention. You might be thirsty for validation. You might be thirsty for love. You might be thirsty for money. You might be thirsty for 
marriage, whatever it is, he who drinks of this water which I give them shall never thirst again. Right? And that comes directly after when the Samaritan woman was at the water well. And she went to draw some water. And Jesus said to her, give me to drink some of that water. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to her, where's your husband? He goes, well, I have no husband. Jesus said, you have spoken rightly. But you have been with five men. You five, I think five men. And the one you are currently with now is not your husband. So what is Jesus saying to her? What's the message for us? She was seeking. She, 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 she was, you were with five men. And the one you're currently with now, number six, is not your husband. She was looking for love. Right? And that's when the verse came after. He who drinks of this water that I give them will never thirst again. So she was thirsty for love. She was thirsty for maybe affection, tension. That's what she was thirsty for. And Jesus was saying, if you continue drinking from that well, you will always thirst again. And so you will have the next man and the next man and the next man. It can be a next woman, next woman, next woman. Whatever you're thirsty for. If it's money you're thirsty for, you will have you will chase the next money, the next money, and the next money after that. So Jesus was saying to her, you know, he was telling her, you're thirsty for these things. You're thirsty for, you're seeking love, but you're seeking it from the wrong well, because this well runs dry. And that's why you're always thirsty. And that's why you need to go to the next one and the next one and the next one. But Jesus is saying to her, he who drinks of the water that I will give them will never thirst again. In other words, you're going to find the love you need here. You're no longer going to be thirsty. I'm going to quench your thirst. You will find the attention you need here. You will find the validation you need here. So you need to ask yourself, what are you thirsty for? Love, attention, money, fame, whatever it is. What are you thirsty for? Come to Jesus. He who drinks of the water that Jesus gives them will never thirst again. You see, we're thirsting for the wrong things. And because we're going to the wrong wells, water wells to drink, and these are wells that run dry, we're always left thirsty. We're drinking, we're drinking, we're always left thirsty. So we're always searching for more to drink. So we're always thirsty. We're never satisfied. And Jesus says, come to me. I'm the living water. Come to me. And when you drink from this water, you're never going to thirst again. You drink from the water of Jesus Christ, you never thirst again because everything you need is found in Jesus Christ. But anything other than that, disobedience against God, it will bring you pain. Fallen world and fallen man brings pain. It will bring you pain and it will bring disgrace upon your life. If you're trying to draw from another source other than God, whether it's money chasing, it will bring pain and disgrace in your life. If you're trying to seek love from another source other than God or the kingdom marriage god has to you for you you will bring pain and disgrace upon your life and that will be your downfall that will be your downfall even if it looks like it's good it's not it's just deception and that's what the enemy is good at deceiving it's deception from the evil one and the bible tells us in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 satan disguises himself as an angel of light Satan's not going to come as Satan. He's going to come disguised as an angel of light. If he can disguise as an angel to deceive a third of the angels to rebel against God, then he can come disguised to you as well, disguised as something good to cause you to rebel against God, to make good look bad and bad look good. That's a deception. He comes disguised. And, and, and it's to cause you to rebel against God, as he did the third of the angels who were in heaven. And so... Through this deception, we end up in wrong relationships because we're thirsting for this love, we're thirsting for something. And because of the deception of the enemy, he takes us away from the path of God, which is a godly relationship, and he puts us in this wrong relationship. So we're always thirsty, 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 like the woman and the Samaritan. As Jesus said, you spoke right, he's not your husband, because you've had five men before him, and the one you're currently with is not your husband. She was drinking from the wrong well. She was drawing from the wrong source. Jesus says, come and drink from this water. You're never going to thirst again. So you could be, the deception of the evil one is to get you to rebel against God. Rebel against God through a wrong relationship, through a money path, through a career path, through something. Wrong ways of thinking, wrong attitudes of the heart, wrong, wrong whatever. So don't rush into, into things. 
when God is saying wait you have to wait wait on the Lord you have to really trust in him the only way you're going to wait on him is if you trust in him you're not going to wait on someone that you don't trust on that you don't trust I want to give you two Bible verses both of them are, are in Isaiah the first one is Isaiah 30 Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 and it says the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you and therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you for the Lord is a God of justice blessed are those who wait on the Lord blessed are you when you wait on the Lord don't let the enemy cause you to rush when God is telling you wait mm -hmm. and don't be so weak and so have no self-control and say yeah but I want that yeah but I, and God is saying no and you say yeah but I want that and God is saying no the only thing that will come out of that when God is saying no is pain and disgrace mm -hmm. You know, you will bring disgrace upon yourself. You will bring pain and suffering upon yourself. And that will be your downfall. Mm -hmm. The next verse is Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Those who mm -hmm. wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Mm -hmm. They shall walk and not faint. Mm -hmm. Can you see the difference? When you're waiting on the Lord. When you're not waiting on the Lord. It's pain, it's suffering. You bring disgrace upon you. Mm -hmm. And that will be your downfall. But when you wait upon the Lord, you will mount with wings like eagles. You will run and not be weary. You shall walk and you will not faint. And God will bless you because blessed is the one who waits on the Lord. Right? With that being said, beloved brothers and sisters, if my videos are blessing you, be sure to bless back. Links are below. Books can be purchased below. Who is God? Spiritual warfare. Worldly life of deception. New Age Occult to Jesus Christ, and this is grace. These books would definitely bless all of you. I fasted and prayed for them. Link for the books are below. God bless you. Peace be with you.